Guys, it's Reenactment Day here with a new video, and we are back yeah. in the hole. Now, um, we're a little bit more prepared. I got my raincoat out. Yeah, I, I let him borrow a poncho. And there we go, down the hole. But yeah, it might rain, so we might stay out here depending on how heavy the rain gets, and just put on our raincoats. And we have a pup tent. We do have a pup tent, but we're not going to do a, an overnight due to the fact of rain. <laughs> and we don't know how waterproof this is if yet. If you look at me, if you look at me, I've acquired some new things. Check out my video, I'll talk about these later. But I've acquired two more regular pouches. So now I've got an appropriate number of them. Even though they're still painted open because they're brand new. And some new leggings. Which make my feet look a little more historically accurate. Yes. Which is cool. Now we have finished digging the MG position. The wall collapsed just a just a tiny bit here. That's not big a deal. I can do that with my T handle. But we finished the MG position. It just kind of is an L and goes over here. It actually goes up a little bit. We'll have to dig that out at some point. But we would have the MG right here, but we don't have one. MG right here, kind of facing that road, well concealed. Not the best place because of that tree. But, yeah, it'd be nice. And we might we might just kind of take this and just make it big, bigger. And instead of it being the small L, it will be a huge kind of chunk at the end. So, yeah, that is, that might be our plan, but, yeah, the L is done. Okay, so we're back with the trench. This is just a chill in the trench. We didn't dig any. It is... It was really nice and cool earlier, so we thought it would be good for our field jackets. That's nope. The humidity decided, Hello. We rolled up our sleeves. I unbuttoned pretty much my full shirt. Still dripping sweat. We tried to set up the pup tent over the trench. That ultimately failed. So as we to figure out how to do it, so I guess we're done. Yeah. So now we're just here. In the trench. It's hot. Yeah. I'm gonna get some water. So, we had a little collapage while I was walking up there and that I just kinda... That's a fun word. Yes. But... No answer out of my country. Sorry. But, um... Whole lot of dirt. We'll just put that back in the hole I made with my foot. Yes. Digging out the buried ration cans now because we left them in here. We should really make like a wooden wall like we did on the bench. We well, got the sticks, we just need the wood. Uh, yeah. I think we have the wood. We're just gonna bring it out here. Dig in a hole. There they are. <laughs> so, yeah, that is the most recent thing that happened. We're basically sitting here on our helmet. Oh, helmet sitting. You can look at my butt if you want. Uh. So, we've got the stumps that we sit on, but they were wet and dirty. And we've sat in our helmets before and it's quite comfortable, so we're like, what if we put the helmet on the stump to keep our butts dry? So, yeah. I thought of that. He didn't. <laughs> yeah, that was his idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Even if that we're not struggling to um, put up a pup tent over the trench anymore, it's not actually that hot. It's getting cloudy up there. It's probably going to rain soon, and if it's raining, well, we're going to be out here. It depends on how bad it rains. It's like hurricane, then it's like, then we're gonna go inside. So, but if it ain't. But if and it ain't. We'll, and then we'll record a video of Super Smash Bros, but in World War II gear. What? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because we'll just go inside. Mm -hmm. So, right now, we're gonna do a comparison of our gear. Our field gear, this is, field gear compared to his field gear. This is Brick, right now. You can tell by he has a pistol belt. What do we have the same, though? Let's start with that. What we have the same is. The generic M1 steel pot helmet. But actually, we have a small difference there. Yeah, take so yours let's off. let's start with that. My helmet has the, no netting on it. And it's just the raw steel pot shell with liner. Bald. So it's just the basic steel pot helmet. Um, since I am not showing my face right now because of reasons, um, we will show what the helmet different looks like on reenactment day's head. 
Okay, well, I can't flip the camera around, but you can see, uh, hold down your helmet. You, you hold yours. And oh, then I was put... just talking about how it looks on a person. So hold on, just give me one second. These are the differences. And we'll do a review of me and they'll see it. See, it's just plain. Yeah, same helmet though. So, now, well, we also have the same, are leggings, the M38 leggings. Now, here's our JQMD, mine are made in America. But they look and feel almost 100% exactly but, the same. Yeah, they're still the same pattern. The difference on at the front is that one of them is made overseas, one of them is made in America. And also, one is $60 and one is $30. Uh, now you know my reasons. And I, I got, I, I, there was a guy who was selling these, and these were like in perfect condition, so I've got these awesome. for anyway, like 30 Anyway, continuing. Now, boots. Boots. Uh, he has real These are the real reproduction. He has boots that look like it. They're lookalikes, but they do the job for I mean, they do so look can... pretty similar, other than the point and a light uh, shade, lighter shade. Yeah. But the lighter shade is even forgivable because of manufacturing differences. Just and variations and stuff. Yeah. I mean, for example, OD green and khaki color. There were so many different colors for field gear. Now, he has wool pants, the M37 wool uniform. Well, flannel. Oh, I, use the phone, I, it was I have wool. So right now he's wearing the M37 wool uniform with a flannel shirt. Which now, is just a cheaper alternative to the wool shirt. Yes, a lot of GIs also had that. So I just bought yes. the wool shirt because I thought it was nicer. Yes. But so there was that. Same uniform. Same and everything. The haversack is the other thing we have. Exactly yeah, the M1928 same. haversack. JQMD at the front. Now, it's the normal haversack. He has a. Uh, pickaxe, which this, uh, um, we're trying to figure out if this will go on his belt or on his haversack, or if it just... I think, theoretically, well, hold on, if I talk away from the camera, you can't hear me right. Uh, I think, theoretically, um, a GI in the field could wear his pickaxe wherever he wanted, but, you know, the standard way to wear it, we don't necessarily know yet. Okay, so turn back around. So, normal haversack, meat can pouch with your, uh, meat mess tin and all that, then the... Just, you know, the normal inside, he has a couple things in there, I don't know what you have. Okay, now, same stuff as you. pistol belt. It I have has, a pistol belt instead of a cartridge belt. It is an original Sion. 1944, right? It's 1944, made by the Hamlin Canvas Corporation. Yeah, no D green pistol belt. Pistol belt. Now, um, instead of having uh, that normal medical pouch, you know. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. Like you open it up. It's got, you know, my little gauze canister that, in there. You know, just a spray painted out toys can, which, is, you know, a lot of people use it. Yes. So... Now he has himself set up for an M1 carbine, or or an M1 or, Garand. Now really, those are just mostly for the to, uh, carbine. Carbines. These but are bigger pouches. paratroopers would use this, and they could hold about four M1 Garand clips in yes. one pouch. Now he has a total of three regular pouches, yes. which I could use to actually carry quite a lot of ammunition. Pretty okay. similar to the cartridge belt. Yes. Now his canteen cover. Is also an original. Also an original. 1950s original, sadly, but it is the same pattern. But there is no difference version. of it, other than this small little tag. Or don't even know where that tag went anymore. It's probably on the inside. It is. Yes. So <laughs> you're not even going to notice. But same pattern, same everything. It's original. Fits the canteen just right. Canteen is a reproduction canteen, stainless steel. Uh, I recommend getting a stainless steel so it doesn't corrode on the inside. Drink out of it. Yeah. Um, also, standard GI belt. And it's, GI belt. Sometimes I wear a pistol uh, holster, but not today. It's just a standard belt. That's that's really all it is. These M37 trousers are also original. They are 1950s original. If you look, they are slightly, and I mean very slightly, a different shade than reenactment days. But again, the variations of colors happens a lot during wartime yes. in mass production of all the gear, so acceptable. Yes. Now, I don't think you have anything else other than, you know, Yankee division patch which we have we both have that we will discuss there are some things that i am missing that reenactment days does have okay now we're now we'll do the gear i have okay so i can show my face because this is my youtube channel and i chose to but standard you know wool m37 m37 wool uniform with the wool shirt instead of the flannel leggings the right boots which are nice, they're round on the edge. These aren't combat, these are dress and combat. So they will, technically could be used for both. Once I get enough money, I will be getting the combat boots. Okay. So, you know, I have the, I have an M1 Garand set up uh, clip, in which I have fake bullets in here. These are fake, no primer or gunpowder in them. They're just 
but you can see he has the cartridge belt instead of a pistol belt. The cartridge belt is similar to the pistol belt in the way that it has the holes yes. for attaching things like the canteen cover and the first aid pouch. You will get there. But it has pouches for yep. magazines. Pouches for the well. M1 Garand. Now, next, you know, normal first aid pouch. His is slightly nicer than mine. Slightly nicer, but... Similar. Almost exactly the same. Yeah, same design. Same pattern used and all that. Alright, let's move to the canteen I have cover. A khaki canteen cover. Um, this is like a really big canteen cover. I'm not sure. Surprisingly um, large. Yeah, but it does keep the, the water canteen colder inside because of the wool in there. It's insulated. Yeah. Now, bandolier. Bandolier. A bandolier. These have M1 Garand clips, clips as well. The brew here. Now, and it gives it. Um, I remember when I used to wear this without the clips. It was just a soggy piece of fabric. And now it's very heavy. <laughs> and now it's heavy. Yes. And Of course we have the gas mask bag, which I believe we discussed somewhat earlier in this video. Um, if you'd turn around to show it. Bag. Yes. Have the normal, or well, the lightweight gas mask bag covered in dirt. Yes. Um, We're in a trench, after all. Yes. It, it just goes around it just goes around you on your side. Almost like, like a purse. <laughs> um, inside, got plenty of room for stuff. Like, all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Like I got the M1 sling in here, an extra t-shirt. Um, et cetera, et cetera. That's all I have in here for now. But I'd, yes. This would be full of uh, stuff if I go to a reenactment, which there might be a reenactment that I will go to. We're not Dunbar. sure yet. They might. It might be canceled, or it might get canceled, but we might have one. So. Yes. I will let you know, and I'll try and make a video about that reenactment if it happens. If you spin around, spin I will around. talk a little bit about the differences in our haversacks. Differences in our haversacks. Okay. So. Mine's as you can see, it is the same haversack Mine's as mine. Full, I actually his, have... Yeah, he has the K-rations and stuff in it. He does have a belt wrapped around his haversack for helping attach things. And keeping the bayonet down. Keeping the off. bayonet down. He does have a bayonet on his haversack. This is, the, this is the M1 bayonet, not the M1905, I think, bayonet. So it's not as long as the other bayonet. You see, this is an original covered in dirt right now, which I will clean it out when I get home. But, original bayonet dated 1943. Nice. Now, the problem is with this, is I can't get it back in there. So, if you would, put it back in. Yes. I won't stab you, I hope. <laughs> okay, now that's in. If you turn around and all the way to the back. showing you again. It locks in to the thing. Did it just come out of the loop? Did just come out of the loop. It that is a problem that we've been having with this. Yeah, because as you see, mine doesn't have the metal eyelet thing. And anymore. I don't have a bayonet, so I don't have, uh, I haven't had any problems with that yet. So we will come back when we have this fixed. Okay. So we fixed the bayonet. That's all back in the holes and stuff. But right now I have the M1910 key handle shovel, which is the most common tool of you know, GIs would have. They could also have the M1943 entrenching tool, which would be a little different. It'd be folding instead of a fixed hand handle on the shovel. But I like the M1910 shovel. I also have the M1910 shovel carrier up there covering the spade from all the other, well, from, you know, stabbing into the haversack. Now, um, oh heck, I forgot. But what were we gonna, okay, you know, I'll just work on the helmet. Well, this is how the helmet will fit to the head, right here. All right, and if you show him the variation in the helmets, as my helmet is right next to you, it's almost like we did that on purpose. Yes. What it looks like on the head. Now, his liner's a bit big on me. Yeah, it's my head's a little bigger. But and so that's the difference. Uh, also, my leather strap's a little uh, different. Broken, too. Yeah, it's a little broken. Well, we'll fix that at some point. It's not. So anyway, not yes. Bad. But you see, this is strapped over the top right here. My chin strap strapped over the back, yeah. back here. Yeah, his liner holds it, and his chin strap do hold a little tighter because he does have the netting on his helmet, which actually helps with that a lot. Like I can, like I have this adjusted to my head. You see, can this band right here can be adjusted, and this right here can also be adjusted. So this, it's made so if you get hit in the head with a, like a shockwave from a bomb. It's a it's suspension liner. There's a layer of air which makes hurt. the helmet not contact your like, head. I don't even feel that barely. Yep. So, like, if I just had the steel pot on my head, <laughs> it, it might hurt, hurt a lot. lot. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, that should just about wrap up the differences between our gear. Again, similar from a distance, but quite different when you look up close. Is there anything else with the haversack? Like, I feel like there was something. 
No, I think we got everything. Alright. So another variation is having the M41, this is the M41 field jacket on there. Jacket. Yeah, it's, a, it's the summer jacket, which means... No liner. <laughs> no well, liner. Actually, there is kind of a lining. It's just a very light lining. It's not a thick fleece lining, which makes it very warm. Yes. But that is pretty much it. That is all the, pretty much the variations. I got a raincoat over there for emergency purposes, and I'll this show you poncho, how that goes. It's not a World War II poncho. It's not World War II, but it's just to keep them dry. It's green. It does its job. Fine yes. Well In the camera, it looks bright green, but so, it's actually a little darker of a green. So, what? yeah, uniforms. Mine is really heavy. So that's the end of Chona Trench part 4, I think. I think this is part 4. Um, it got dark. I don't know if this video is going to be long or short because I didn't piece together all the pieces. So I think it's going to be long or normal length, but we will see and this video will be out shortly. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe. If you have any video ideas, come uh, put them in the comments below. And if you like that informational video that we made and want that to be an intro or something like that, I'll just put that in the comments. Yep, I'll see you guys later.